Sea turtles have been around for millions of years. They were nesting on these beaches long before humans ever stepped foot here. And it's important to point out too that Florida's beaches provide some of the most important nesting habitat in the entire world for sea turtles. So what we do here really does make a difference. I'm Kelly Sloan. I'm the Sea Turtle Program Coordinator here on Sanibel and Captiva Islands for the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation. And monitoring for sea turtles on Sanibel started way back in the 1950s with Charles LaBeouf and his group, which was called Creta Research, which makes this one of the longest running sea turtle programs in the country. When the program was transferred to SCCF in 1992, the Sanibel-based nonprofit became responsible for monitoring 18 miles of beachfront habitat. The sea turtle program is a monitoring effort that we have on Sanibel and Captiva. So we're permitted through the state, through the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission. That allows us to perform monitoring activities. So we monitor the sea turtles that come and nest on our beaches. We protect those nests throughout the season. Uh, we inventory them after they hatch. So we see kind of how many eggs were laid and what the success of that nest was, uh, as well as we also do a number of different research projects within the program. During the nesting season, which runs from April 15th through the end of October, the team monitors all of Sanibel and Captiva Islands, setting out just before sunrise. We uh, walk sections of beach uh, or drive beach vehicles, and we're looking for any signs of sea turtle activity from uh, the previous night. So we're looking to find fresh tracks, and then from there we can determine uh, the species of the turtle uh, that made those crawls, whether or not that turtle nested or uh, maybe just came on the beach and went back to the ocean, uh, which is what we call a false crawl. When a nest is found, they're permitted to verify the egg chamber so they can place a protective screen over the nest. We need to uh, know exactly where those eggs are, where the egg chamber is located at, so that we can make sure that that screen is placed uh, perfectly on top. So what that means is reading some of the sign that the turtle is left in the sand, kind of knowing their nesting behavior and the entire process, we're able to determine kind of where those eggs likely are. And then we're actually able to probe using our fingers in the sand, and from there we can determine where those eggs are. In addition to morning surveys, they also perform surveys at night to find females laying eggs. So we take ATVs or UTVs out on the beach, and we're going to be using red uh, headlights. So uh, the sea turtles can't detect red lighting that well, so we try to be minimally invasive. And we'll go out on the beach and we'll do surveys. We'll go up and down the beach and then um, we'll be looking for nesting females, loggerheads, greens, any species that's coming up to nest at night. Then we will uh, find them, we'll measure them, tag them, and then put a screen down on top of their nest to protect the eggs from uh, predation. So eventually, you know, it gets to a point around 45 to 60 days from when a nest is laid that it's in its hatch window when it's likely going to hatch. In the same way that we're looking for the crawls that turtles made coming out of the ocean to lay eggs, we determine a nest is hatched when we see those same tracks, but much smaller coming from the hatchlings, leaving the nest going to the ocean. And so at that point, then we know that a nest is hatched. Typically, most hatchlings will emerge from a nest all at once, but to be safe, the team waits several days to allow all the eggs to emerge naturally. So we don't want to go right in. We want to let things happen as naturally as possible. So. Um, usually after that several days, everything that's emerged from the nest and has hatched will have done so, and then uh, we're allowed to go in and, and perform the inventory. They dig down to unearth the eggs and count the number that have hatched from the nest. So we're looking at eggs that hatched, eggs that didn't hatch, whether there's still live hatchlings in the nest or maybe dead hatchlings. We're just recording all that information, uh, which gives us our hatch success. So how many hatchlings are being produced on, on our islands? In the winter months of off-season, much time is spent in the office or lab processing all the data and testing specimens. So we have a lot of biological samples that we've collected. So the samples need to be processed, uh, sorted, and then we can start running our uh, testing. During the 2018 Red Tide event, almost 1,300 sick or dead sea turtles washed up and that clearly shows the immediate short-term effects of a bloom of that magnitude on sea turtles. But it's also important to consider the longer-term effects when you're evaluating the threats on an imperiled species like loggerheads. So in 2019 and 2020, we collected blood from every nesting female that we encountered on the beach. And we wanted to see if these seemingly healthy sea turtles um, tested positive for brevitoxin exposure, and if so, determine if it had any negative impacts on their health and reproductive success. 
the over 100 volunteers play a vital role in the work being done to protect sea turtles. We absolutely couldn't function without the help of our volunteers. They contribute thousands and thousands of hours every season that we literally couldn't accomplish with just our three staff members. And not only that, but their enthusiasm fuels us every day. We just love our volunteer group. Volunteers are um, integral to the success of our program. We monitor 18 miles of island, all of Sanibel and all of Captiva. Uh, certainly can't be done by one or, or a few people. So we've got a dedicated team of, you know, right around 100 volunteers who are walking sections of beach. We're out there monitoring, um, usually with a partner on these beaches, looking for nests, finding them, screening them, performing these inventories. Uh, they're super important. They are stewards of the beach. They engage with the general public. They can, uh, you know, teach people about what they can do to kind of help protect the sea turtles, how they can get involved. Um, so it's really crucial, you know, we, we couldn't do what we do without them, certainly. Last year on our beaches, we recorded 922 loggerhead nests, which was a record for both islands, which is really encouraging. We've seen really positive numbers over the past few years. And statewide, it seems like the loggerhead nest counts are stable. They're not declining anymore. And this is all really hopeful news, but this is still a population that's fragile and needs all the help we can give them. To learn more about sea turtles and how you can help, please visit sccf.org.